Good afternoon and welcome to Annunciation Parish. Today we celebrate the sixth Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our celebrant for today, Miss Mass, is Father Steve. Before we begin our celebration, there are a few announcements. In order, in honor of World Marriage Day, there will be a blessing for married couples, all masses this weekend. We have a few spots on the pastoral council that have opened up as some members have ended their terms. The council meets monthly to advise the pastor and help provide input and guidance in important, excuse me, important decisions regarding the life of our parish. If you would like to see, if you would like to see on the pastoral council, please contact Father Steve. All are welcome to the Spanish community mail that will be meal that will be held after the noon Spanish Mass at Holy Spirit next Sunday. There will be a second collection today for the Home Missions Appeal. A special basket has been provided for this collection. Please be as generous as you are able. Good afternoon. Our opening hymn is number 303, Gather Us In. Please stand. Our Lord speaks to a group of disciples today, and he reminds us all that there is something much more to be had in him than in anything else, and to turn our hearts to him. So now, recalling the times we did not turn our hearts to the Lord, and we sought things outside of him, we turn and ask the Lord for forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you became poor to show us the riches of salvation. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you suffered insult on behalf of those you would save. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you call us to the blessedness of the kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, 
Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, we see our faith. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, and have You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Let us pray. O God, who teach us that you abide in our hearts that are just and true. Grant that we may be so fashioned by your grace as to become a dwelling pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, cursed is the one who trusts in human beings, who seeks his strength in flesh, whose heart turns away from the Lord. He is like a barren branch in the desert that enjoys no change of season, but stands in a lava waste, a salt and empty earth. Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose hope is in the Lord. He is like a tree planted beside the waters that stretches out its roots to the stream. It fears not the heat when it comes. Its leaves stay green. In the year of drought, it shows no distress, but still bears fruit. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, if Christ is preached as raised from the dead, how can some of you say there is no resurrection of the dead? If the dead are not raised, neither has Christ been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is in vain. You are still in your sins. Then those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If for his, this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are the most pitiable people of all. But now Christ has been raised from the dead the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. The word of the Lord. reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus came down with the twelve and stood on a stretch of level ground with a great crowd of his disciples and a large number of the people from all of Judea and Jerusalem and the coastal regions of Tyre and Sidon. And raising his eyes towards his disciples, he said, Blessed are you who are poor, for the kingdom of God is yours. Blessed are you who are now hungry, for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who are now weeping, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you and when they exclude and insult you and denounce your name as evil on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice and leap for joy on that day. Behold, your reward will be great in heaven. For their ancestors treated the prophets in this way. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are now filled, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, for you will grieve and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for their ancestors treated the false prophets in this way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. We can put a lot of value on the opinions of others. We can worry about what people will think of us and depend very heavily on others emotionally. But the truth is, people can be a little funny with their loyalties. You know, it's easy to get on someone's wrong side, to have a person turn against you, or to be let down by someone. You can get praised one day, and canceled the next. Our readings today remind us that we often fail to look for another 
and a more secure source of support, purpose, stability, satisfaction. One that doesn't let us down so easy. In case you're wondering, this source is not, as many in our culture tell us, to be found in ourselves. You know, don't trust in others, just you trust in you. You take care of you. You have to do what you need to do for you and all that. Even we tend to let ourselves down. Even we do not always do what is in our best interests. In the first reading, Jeremiah says, Cursed is the one who trusts in human beings, who seeks his strength in flesh. That's, as I said in my column, a bit harsh. But really, he may be meaning more of this, like, Cursed is the one who seeks too much in the strength of humans. He gets very specific about those who are cursed. He says that they are those who turn their hearts away from the Lord. And there it is. There is the heart of what we need to get to. When we trust in human beings, even in that specific human being I call me, we can cause us to turn away from the Lord. When, we, when the advice that they give leads me away from the law of the Lord and the teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ, when I trust in them or myself to be able to have the ability to fix all things and to do it without needing to depend on God, then we get into trouble. We miss one of the great truths of this world. Jesus himself put it this way, Without me, you can do no good thing. Maybe part of our stress in this life comes from trying to accomplish satisfaction in the wrong things and apart from the Lord. On top of all this, at the end of our lives, if we aren't hanging closely to the one who is the resurrection and the life to whom no one goes to the Father except through him, we can also miss out on the greatest thing of all. In the Gospel today, we heard Jesus on what's called the Sermon on the Plain. And it's, very, it's the analogous thing to the Sermon on the Mount, which will be in Matthew's Gospel. Now look at those he lists who are in sorrow. He says, you know, these, not the people we would expect, he that's the rich, those with plenty of food, those who are laughing, those who are popular. Not what we would expect for the, uh, those who are sorrowful. Those who are blessed are the poor, the hungry, the weeping, the rejected. So what's he trying to say? What's he trying to get at? It has to do with whether or not you're turning your heart towards or away from the Lord. You know, in a lot of cases, when things are going well, when we have enough money and food, when we're well-liked, we get pats on the back, our heart can drift away from the Lord. Huh? We think, I'm all set. I'm all taken care of. I'm on top of the world. And we start to forget our need to continue to cling to Jesus. We put more of our hopes on material goods, money, positive emotions, partying, pleasure, feeling satisfied because others think well of us. But we might compromise the things of God to get those people to like us or to get the money, food, and security we're not guaranteed we're becoming absorbed in pleasures that only go so far before they start having their own downside. Part of Jesus' message here, too, is woe to you who seek all these things and move your heart away from me. Because you also move your heart away from the one who can bring you the unbounded satisfaction of eternal life. Woe to you. Short-sighted are you to do that? 
The blessed, though, the blessed turn to the Lord in their heart because of their need. They seek consolation from the Lord in their sorrow. They let people think bad of them for following the Lord. They know that they hunger and they seek to fill it with the Lord. My experience is that the closer my heart is to the Lord, the more I am at peace. And I'm not struggling so much against all the stresses of life. I'm not battling them, wrestling them into place. Somehow, there's something happening. The Lord is with me and lifting me beyond all these things that I just think will make me feel better if I wrestle them into place. Jesus has given us in the Eucharist his own presence to fill our deeper hunger that all these other things in the world cannot fill. The body, blood, soul, and divinity of the Lord is here for you to give your heart to. Woe to the one who does not come to the banquet because they're spending time to please others or to gain things which ultimately won't satisfy. Woe to those who build their house on the shifting sands of current opinions, fleeting pleasures, fickle human opinions and praise instead of that firm rock which is Jesus Christ who does not just shift away. But blessed is the one who approaches this Eucharist rightly and receives the graces that one receives when receiving it worthily. Blessed is the one who may doubt, but who prays to grow in their faith in the Lord's Eucharistic presence. Blessed is the one who can profess to others, who can live out the Lord's law of love of God and neighbor. And to do that, even if it's not a popular position. Blessed is the one who has faith in the power of the Lord to supply, to heal, to provide an eternal dwelling when this life on earth is done. No human being can do this, and we cannot do it for ourselves. But only the one who has risen from the dead, who goes on ahead of us to prepare a place for us to follow. I don't know about you, but I want to put my heart with him. Let us now together profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father of all men, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and visible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from God, to God. <laughs> Through him all things are made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate with the Virgin Mary in the beginning. For our sakes, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, who is here, who is the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the Lord of the world, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one who will be back in the house of God. I confess one that I have presented the forgiveness of sins.
our Lord provides us more things than we could ever imagine. And so now in faith in that presence, we turn and bring these prayers. For all those who serve the gospel, that the Beatitudes would be boldly proclaimed, we pray to the Lord. For leaders of government, that they may be attentive, attentive to the needs and concern of the least influential of those they represent, we pray to the Lord. For those who hunger and thirst, for outcasts, and for those who grieve, that they found, find comfort in God's living presence, we pray to the Lord. For all who have suffered the loss of a loved one, that God's love and peace flood their hearts, we pray to the Lord. For those who are homeless and all who cannot protect themselves and their families from the bitter winter weather, that they may be kept warm and safe, we pray to the Lord. For all those who are discouraged, that they find new hope through this community of faith, we pray to the Lord. For those who sleep in death, for in life in the one spirit of Christ, especially Cecile, Cecilia Sear, Vidaline, and Albert Gallant, for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, through the prayers we bring to you in confidence and faith, hear all these prayers we pray, which we offer in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. The preparation hymn is number 624, Whatsoever You Do, number 624. My sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this oblation, O Lord, we pray, cleanse and renew us, and may it become for those who do your will the source of eternal reward, through Christ our Lord. 
Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you may love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exaltation we acclaim. Gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. Passion of your Son, 
his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and the salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O oh merciful Father, gather to yourself all of your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, especially for Cecilia Sear and Vitlin and Albert Gallant, and for all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and he, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Lord, Lord, our Lord, 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 we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. The communion hymn is number 332, Taste and See, number 332.
Let us pray. Having fed upon these heavenly delights, we pray, O Lord, that we may always long for that food by which we truly live, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us go in peace to Mass. Closing him is number 601, We Are the Light of the World, number 601.